Some of my favourite videos are when street preachers get all up in your face about why they're right and you're wrong. Why is it nonsense to believe there's a power that exists outside of the universe greater than anything that exists within the universe? Are you believing in science? That's why you stop believing in God. I have a quick question. It's very important. Whoever hates me hates my father also. But sometimes it's nice to take things back to a more chilled vibe and listen to two believers discuss who has the correct God. Maybe I'll pick one today. Hello, I'm the Skeptic, the British floating circle that watches people make extraordinary claims and then I explain why I don't accept what they're saying in the hope that some folks who also don't believe get some reassurance that they're not alone in their non-belief. There are some very annoying street preachers out there. I'm looking at you, Hamza. But there are some that like to calmly spread the word of an undemonstrated being. Apologia, not to be confused with Paulogia, has almost 450,000 subscribers and says some dumb things about what people should do with their bodies and why their God is the correct one, which is fascinating when two devout Mormons who believe in a slightly different flavour of God are just as convinced that they're right. So before we hear some compelling arguments for who's right and who's wrong, if this isn't your first sceptic video, hit the like, the subscribe and the bell to get more videos like this in your feed. And a super thanks to those that hit super thanks in some recent videos. Atheist Mum, Kinko Kitsumi, Tim Tully, Brandon Naramore and tater pants. Lisa the rainbow giraffe bestows leaves upon you all. More hen. Who's right? Who's wrong? There's only one way to find out. So why are you a Latter-day Saint? Oh, because of the convictions I've had. And I know you've, you've brought up some, some good points against that. Um, but I, I don't think Joseph Smith's a liar. Why is that? Uh, the experiences I've had reading the Book of Mormon. That's how I decide if someone is or isn't lying to me. Let's think of a lie and someone that would tell me a lie. Oh, this'll do. That there's a crocodile living in your pond, sceptic. To work out if they're lying, I think of experiences I've had, like that time I was on a roller coaster and reading Poison Study by Maria V. Snyder. That hang on, I don't even have a pond and there are no crocodiles in Kentucky. The first vision, any of the accounts, I, I feel the Spirit of God. Uh, rested upon me, convicting me that that's that is true and that's right. Okay. Um, I don't. What, would, I don't see... what would you say to the Muslim that has sure a and similar the, and that's experience? Where good conversation comes in very similar experience, right? But he, he, but he thinks he would disagree with you and I both. Right. He thinks Jesus isn't the Son of God. Sure. That he's not. Uh, he didn't die for sins. But right. they they are they feel very strongly about their experience. Right, and that's where we kind of go to by their fruits you shall know. Right. And I think the fruits that come from Joseph Smith, namely number one, the Book of Mormon, uh, the other books of Scripture, I think I think those ring true to me, uh, as maybe a, the Quran with 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 a Muslim. So is, is it right though? Because it teaches a different sure. God and gospel than you would believe in. I, I agree. Why don't they apply that logic to their own belief? That's where it gets it gets tricky. I'd like I, to add something. You know, sure. I think like, sure. A big part of it is, you know, like when we talk about truth, I mean, I think you and I both agree, we don't have a monopoly on truth. Like, I believe that there were a lot of inspired men out there where maybe they've just seen things. I mean, like, God's work is all around us, right? We can look and see God in everything. And they've probably observed a lot of that and had experiences, maybe that were similar. Um, don't know exactly how they got these experiences, but they've been able to learn truth just by living in God's Sorry, the cows are, uh, cars are loud. I'm trying to hear you. Yeah. yeah. But they've probably had experiences just living in God's creation. You know? Well, yeah, I mean, you, you're kind of saying what Romans 1 says and other passages that the creation itself testifies to all of us. Oh, good. Because the fact that there is stuff is absolutely proof that a God did it. So much so that everybody in the world, every image bearer of God, is left without an excuse before God for the rejection of God and their worship of a false God. Oh, totally. So like when you look in Africa or other places right now, tribes that worship the grass or the cow or the sky or whatever, yeah. the Bible yeah. says that they actually stand condemned because there's enough revelation in nature itself to leave people without any excuse for the rejection of the true God. Look at the trees, look at the trees! So I think the question really is, and I want to listen to what you say to this, the question is, what is the truth? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. What I really enjoy about all this is that three adults are standing around discussing whose storybook is more believable. Someone called Jesus may have said that, but how do you know it's actually true? So he claimed to be the truth, and he taught us about who he was. The scriptures tell us about Christ, about the fact that Jesus was never created, that he always existed as God. 
So then, wouldn't that mean the whole being born thing's a lie? Which means that the book isn't true. In relationship with the Father, that he created everything in existence, including Lucifer. That's in John 1. That's in Colossians chapter 1. The Jesus of Scripture is the creator of Lucifer. He's not a spirit a brother. And, and I've, you've probably heard me say this before if you've watched the videos. Sure. The challenge here with, with this conversation is that you guys are very zealous. You're obviously very passionate. I believe you're sincere completely. The problem is, is that in the very first century, not long after the resurrection of Jesus... Which is just a story and didn't happen. Especially if, like you say, Jesus has always existed as a god. Then he didn't die. If you actually listen to the things they say, it makes less and less sense. And then they come up with weird reasoning to explain it away. The Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians 11 that he's worried about the church in Corinth, that they'll follow another Christ, another gospel, or another spirit. And so the question is, is who is Jesus? Because if we worship a false Christ, like I, I assume that maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. We just met. But yeah. I, if somebody said, well, I worship the Jesus of Islam, who is not the son of God and didn't die for savior, he didn't die for sins. Right, just, a prophet, right? just, just a prophet, a good man, a good prophet. So there is more than one Jesus. How do you know either of you got the right Jesus? Wouldn't Muslims say the same thing about the Jesus of the Bible? They'll say peace be upon him. It's leaf be upon you. Duh. They have reverence for his name, but they they say he didn't die for sins. Um, I would assume that you both would say that's not Jesus. Yeah, correct. Right. Okay. So that, but that is a Christ because they say Jesus Christ. They say they revere him. They say they believe what some of the New Testament says about him, but that's not a Christ that can save because it's a false one. So the question is, is, is the, is the Jesus that Joseph Smith brought to the world, is he the true Christ? Is he the truth? Well, according to the Tony Award winning musical, Joseph Smith met the real Jesus. Ah. And Jesus. That's the question. And, I, you know, you've, if you've seen the videos, you know, the, the, I'm not concerned with the side issues that would divide us. Sure. I mean, you mentioned the pro-life stuff. We're on the same page. Absolutely. So it's not the side issues that I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about whether or not you have a Christ that can save you, whether you have a gospel that will bring you to peace with God. Right, remind me why you don't think that that is for us. We believe our, I mean, Jesus Christ overcame physical and spiritual death uh -huh. to save us from those things. Right. We believe in his teachings. Maybe we have a disagreement on, on some of what those are. Uh, but the main thing, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to save us from physical and spiritual death. Right. So what, where, where are we differing on that? Yeah, no, that's a good point because there's, there's so much. If we, had, if, you, if we were sitting at the ice cream shop over there and we had one minute to talk about Jesus and some, some main points about him, his resurrection, sure. his perfection, people around us probably wouldn't know there's a, quite a difference between us they would just be like oh, these guys are singing the same song right but but i hear you bring up all the time we believe jesus and satan are brothers and you do not hold up brothers why didn't the god just get jebus to kill his brother then since he has no problem with that happening in other places so looking into this and thanks to my good friend erica who is an ex-mormon it turns out satan wanted to let everyone back to heaven but Jesus said no, and that they had to earn it and suffer for eternity if they didn't. Mormon Jesus is an a No wonder these folks can't agree. And that's, that's, that's a main point of it. That like, gets into a minute and a half of the conversation, right? right. You start yeah. saying, well, like, what do you mean? Because like, if you talk to the Muslim on the street and you had 10 seconds, do you believe in Jesus Christ? Guys. He would say, yes, peace be upon him. It's leaf be upon her. We reverence Jesus Christ, <laughs> right? right? He's, he's the Messiah. Right? And sort of, they would, you, okay, you walk away from the conversation. I guess we're on the same page. Yeah. Now, in 15 seconds, you realize you're not talking about the same Christ. Same word, different definition. Oh, he's not the son of God. Oh, he didn't die for sins on the cross. He didn't rise from the dead. Oh, his brother wasn't the ruler of hell? So in the conversation that we're having, the Jesus of Mormonism, the Jesus of Joseph Smith, is that Jesus is the spirit offspring of Heavenly Father and one of his goddess wives. Heavenly Father was once a man like us who became a god like we can become gods one day he had gods before him who had gods before them it's really in many ways we say an infinite regression of gods it goes back and back and back and back and back and there's gods and gods and one of your apostles said there's more gods than there is matter that's a heck of a lot of gods and so when you think about the jesus of mormonism he is the spirit offspring as are we with heavenly father and one of his goddess wives in the pre-existence so that's not the Jesus of Scripture. The Jesus of Scripture is the I Am. He is, he is, the, he is Yahweh. Yeah, I'd be looking at him the exact same way.
but the thoughts going through my head would probably be completely different. More like, you what, mate? A book says that your god had a son that is still the god that originally had the son. Uh, how can you not listen to those words and conclude that it's ridiculous? That's what that's what he calls himself. That's what the writers in the New Testament call him. That's what the Old Testament refers to him as, as, as the eternal God. The Jesus of John chapter 1, just that one passage, just, just read that. It says that he was always in existence forever ago. In the beginning was the word. Uh, in, in the, it gets better in the Greek. And arche ein halagos, the word there is for, as far back as you want to go forever. Jesus was already there. Kind of makes Christmas redundant then, right? Though that was stolen from the pagans anyway. That he was in intimate relationship with the Father and that he was God. And it says that he created all things and that nothing came into being that's come into being except through Jesus. Satan came into being. According to John 1, Jesus created Satan. And since Jesus is apparently the God and Satan is evil, the God created evil. So why can't it just uncreate it? Because the God's too weak to uncreate, maybe it doesn't want to uncreate, or maybe neither Satan nor the God actually exist. Well, you know, our, our belief on that is that before he was Satan, he was Lucifer, fallen angel, one of one of God's most progressed right. spirit children. It right. teaches that in June, too, right. that he fell. Um, no, we believe that Satan is a fallen angel. That's what the Bible teaches. Okay, but, 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 but not it's, necessarily that, that Jesus created. But yeah, I know, but John says Jesus did. Well, the skeptic says that Lisa the Rainbow Giraffe, leaf be upon her, ate Jesus, Lucifer, or Satan, or whatever, Odin, Brahma, Allah, Vishnu, Buddha, and all the others that were there before the chance that all this crap could actually happen. So do we just accept that people say things now, or what? Colossians, Colossians 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, the Word was God. Sure, but we... No, I'll show you the text. Let me see here real fast. Let me see this. Please don't be getting a book out. Who cares? Burn it. Do us all a favor and get rid of it. Do you mind if I ask you this? Sure. So, what, I know you probably wouldn't, by your standard, consider us a uh, Christian, but by with other people's, other Christian, our other Christian brothers' uh, definition of maybe the Trinity, would you consider them Christian as well, seeing that they, they might believe God one and three, three and one? Well, they, well, we believe in the, we believe in the Trinity, sure. right? Okay. And so I'll give you. Like, but if we, here's, anybody with a different Trinity here's a good here's a good example. Um, this guy right here, one of my best friends, brother in the Lord, he's Presbyterian. Cool. Okay. I'm a Reformed Baptist. Right. You, we are exactly in line on every essential of the Christian faith: who God is, the Word of God, how a person is reconciled to God. We have disagreements over side issues like mode of baptism and whether you, you, whether you baptize an infant of a believing person. Oh, jeez. Isn't that really sad? The individual parts of a God belief separate you when all that really matters is demonstrating that God actually exists. Who cares if you think a God is one or three things and how you should be dunked into a magic pool to receive understanding that the God is a thing? Just demonstrate the being. But dang, I've never mentioned how to be baptised into giraffism. Since liquid's the common theme, you'd need to have a golden shower as the yellow liquid represents the magic pee of Lisa the Rainbow Giraffe, leave be upon her. But please don't use actual pee. Orange soda will do just fine and tastes way better. Because you believe God establishes a covenant with the family. Sure. But he doesn't believe that that water baptism saves the baby. He believes that that baby, that child, has to have faith in Christ to be justified before God. Now, how does that, that differ from us? You and I believe yeah. Jesus Christ, Son of God, resurrected on the third Lucifer's day. Lucifer's brother, one God among many gods. Well, I mean, side issue. It's not a side issue. It's a core issue. It's his identity. Why? That's his identity. Well, I mean, Paul even teaches that there's multiple gods, right? But he no. says that there's only one God that we worship. Well, in that text in 1 Corinthians chapter 8 you're referring to, I know it's a popular, I know it's a popular text that you're taught in seminary. It's so weird watching people kind of argue who understands the same wording better. This is probably what it means. No, no, this. Isn't there a verse in the Bible that says something like, the words are written as they're supposed to be read, no interpretation needed? Ah. That when a Christian read that recently. Oh yeah, but it, but it, okay, maybe. But in seminary, they they do have that have in the lessons. Uh, they teach it to missionaries. If a Christian says there's only one God, none before, and none after, as the scriptures say, you can say Psalm 82 and 1 Corinthians 8. Psalm 82. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. 1 Corinthians 8. Now, as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we have all knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up. 
but charity edifieth. I mean, if a human wrote that about a god, how does that person know that a god stands among gods? Did he hear a voice one day that said, I am standing with other gods? Because that, to me, sounds crazy. And the first Corinthians passage has what to do with what? Giving is good, but not to pop idols or something weird. And if you look at those passages, you'll see the Apostle Paul wasn't saying in any way that there's many gods. He actually completely flatly denies it. He's talking about idols. Uh, no mention of idols in Psalm 82. It sounds as though Jeff is making crap up. There are people who sacrifice me to idols. And he said, there are many gods, like many, many of these idols. He said, but there's only one God. These are false gods. So it, he didn't say in any way that there were many gods. He's actually taught, he's remarking on the fact that there are many idols, many false gods in the world, but there's only one true God. And if the God is supposed to be inspiring this word, of course it's going to say, I'm the only one you need to worry about, the others are fake. You're just the gullible one that accepts that it was inspired, and if the God was real, that it actually was the only one. When we, you asked the question about identity, this is the key issue. In the beginning, and you probably know this text, it's sure, probably yeah. one of the most famous in the New one. Testament, yeah. The word, the word in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, that's Jesus, and without Him was not anything made that was made. So the God told a man to write that, and the man went, yeah, sounds about right, and then wrote it, with the intent of convincing others that the God said it. Or, the God said it, wrote it itself, and you just have to accept it because that's what the book says. Honestly, when you say it out loud, it really does sound very dumb. And then it says down here, it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So God, the creator of all things, became flesh and dwelt among us. But it says here that Jesus created everything, and there isn't anything that's come into existence except through Jesus. You can't believe in the Mormon God and believe that. You can't believe in the Christian God if you believe that. That if Jesus was the God, it would be unkillable, and yet it died on a cross, which would mean that the God couldn't have always been, because at one point it would have been deaded, which then means that definitionally it couldn't be true. Why not? Because uh, We believe that Jesus Christ, along with our Heavenly Father, helped organise this earth many other earths right and except you except everything. you don't believe that heavenly father or elohim that he's the creator of everything that was made well I, we believe that jesus christ and i mean many of our general authorities have said michael or adam were part of the creation process under the direction and power of the father but right? even so even elohim and, goes back to him and even elohim in your system is not the creator of everything that's been made what is everything well, I've been stopped by Mormons before, long before I started this channel, and that seems to be a common response. I had what is salt once. Like, is that everything? Everything. Earth? Not... Well, and without him was not anything made that was made. Sure, I think... This is how it's I interpret it different God. Me, right? Like, it, it, relative to our, our mortal understanding. Nothing should be interpreted, because people can interpret things the wrong way. Then who's to say which interpretation is right? That's why, whenever I post Bible passages on Instagram or Facebook, links in the description, and then someone says, this is what is actually meant by this, it makes me laugh, because they're just appealing to a self-entitled authority who also believes what they do, and is just confirming their bias. Okay. That's kind of how I interpret that scripture. I know a part of notice, notice say, But one thing, though, just to challenge you on go that. For it, go for it. You had to add all those words to that text. You can't, see, Mormonism doesn't allow you to let the text speak, to let God speak. Sure. I mean, the way I, I think through that in my mind is what was revealed up to that point. You know, if we're, we're getting these, you know, God progressing or, or any of those beliefs didn't come till, I mean, Joseph Smith, really. Right. Well, actually, Joseph Smith didn't believe it early on. Right. And Joseph Smith, and, I mean, John Taylor made it clear in his, his famous quotation. And so before then, I think God... I mean, revealed these things, and this is what they need. This is relative. This is what's important to them. Would they God contradict himself, though? Because I, I, no. I, get, I get your point. Because right. I'm glad you're saying that. That's yeah. good. That's yeah. good common ground. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because before Joseph Smith came along, you have 2,000 years of Christian history. Yeah. But before that, you've got all of God's Old Testament revelation, right? Yeah. And God's Old Testament revelation over and over and over and in an abundance says there is only one God. Isaiah 43.10 says, Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. Now on that one text alone, all of Joseph Smith's revelation falls. Until you can demonstrate that any holy book is actually the word of a God, all holy books fall. Right. None so, before him, none after how him. How I'd answer that, and I don't know how you answered that on, on your mission, on our missions, but the way I said that was, 
in Isaiah, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's preaching in, in 44, the next chapter, I think he brings up idol worship. I think he's talking to a people yeah. who, ha who struggles with that. Yeah, no, but, you're, a, you're actually, that's very good. Right. But, but, but what he's doing is he's responding to the worship of false gods and he's saying, there were no gods before me, neither shall there be after me. I'm the first and I'm the last. Besides me, there sure. is no God. And you can see that back to what I was saying before. Yeah. I see that as God's being, he's just putting it in a box. I'm the only one you worship. These he didn't say that though. Around. But that, that's kind of. He said he was. He doesn't even know. That makes sense to me. He says, but yeah, but you notice though, because of Joseph's revelation, you have to do that. It's not because of the word of God. Joseph taught you something, and he says, here, sure. here's the lens. I want you to read the Bible through. Isn't that just what all priests are doing when they're not being inappropriate with kids? That is. Oh. Whereas. Yeah, that's kind of how I approach everything. Is like, if, okay, if I start with Joseph Smith, if Joseph Smith's right, then the Book of Mormon's right. If the Book of Mormon's right, then everything else is right, and then I can put the pieces together from there. Okay, right? so now where that's I see, very good. Where I see most of Christianity is they have a lot of awesome pieces of the puzzle. Some of them are twisted. Some of them are put together just right. Some of them not so much. Some of them are missing. Some are here, over here, some are over there. When I have Joseph Smith, with his revelations, with everything he's brought forth more than any other person, man, I feel like I see the picture way more clearly than any of my Even other. Even when Joseph contradicts what God's previous revelation was? Even when Joseph was proven to be a con man, he said some crazy shears like six foot tall Quakers that lived to be a thousand years old were on the moon. He has court documents proving he was a criminal. He actually got convicted of conning folks. Well, just like, let's, 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 well, well, there's 4310, but it keeps going though, because Isaiah 44, 6, he says further, I'm the first and I'm the last. Joseph didn't believe that. And he says, I don't even know of any other gods. Isaiah 44, 8. And Joseph didn't believe that either. Yeah, I think, I think he's, this is just again. Was he telling the truth is the question. Yes, I think he's just saying, look. So there are no other gods. Me. It's not any of these little idols you He said he didn't know of any. Well, yeah, well, and I think but Joseph's just, revelation revealing, doesn't allow you to he's believe just that. just revealing to their understanding. That's how I'm taking it. Right, so he didn't mean it. Well, he meant it, but just, I mean, of course, you teach your children different things about different subjects. But you don't, contra but you don't contradict yourself, though. Right, and I don't think sure. it's a contradiction. I don't think I just so. think I it think was think less of the picture. You know, like so he says, I'm the first and I'm the last. Was that true? Yeah, I believe so. But he wasn't the first God, according to Joseph, and he won't be the last. According to our, so what, what do you I think, think he our, means by the mind. first and the last? Like, he says, be, yeah, he says, um, and I would just encourage you, he's right, he's exactly right. Mm -hmm. In Isaiah 40 through 46 chapters, yeah. it's like the showdown between the true God, the living God, versus all the idols men make. And he, he takes pains to say, there were no gods formed before me. Whew. I let that go on a while, but I genuinely got lost in the whole, no, your belief is wrong because this. No, your belief is wrong because that. And I'm just here going, I don't believe either of you because no God has ever been demonstrated. <laughs> and that, for now, is a good place to leave it. Since the original video is 43 minutes long, maybe we can come back to it. But it definitely was interesting to hear religious folks talk to other religious folks. And it seemed like there was less annoyance than when I've heard street preachers talking to atheists. And I'm still not convinced that there is anything here that would convince me of either side being correct. But maybe you did hear something convincing let me know in the section below skeptic this is another reason to not get stopped by a street preacher a big thank you to this month's top level ticks on patreon addy rockart the enixes elizabeth jakari whiskey tech fred and the absolute lunatic travis as well as all the three dollar base ticks you can become a supporter on patreon too at patreon.com slash the skeptic the link is in the description along with links to all my other socials don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already from me the skeptic stay safe keep Keep thinking logically and ask questions. Skepticism is the first step towards truth. See you next Saturday.